Yo, what is up, guys? This is James Carter TV, and the NFL free agency is coming up tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, 4 o'clock Eastern Time, and it's time to give our top 10 free agents. I'm here with Kuda Charamba. Um, and we're going to go ahead with our 10 through 6. And my number 10, I have John Abraham, defensive end for the Atlanta Falcons. Now, he is 34 years old, but this man can still get to the quarterback. He's still a great defensive end when it comes to getting to the quarterback. He is old, but I do think he has probably two to three good years left in him. And I do like what John Abraham can do um, when it comes to getting the quarterback. My number 9 is Tracy Porter, great quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, probably the best, their best defensive player. Surprised he didn't get re-signed to the New Orleans Saints, but he's, wherever he goes, he's going to make a big impact, I guarantee you. My number eight is Carlos Rogers, 30-year-old man. He signed a one-year deal with the 49ers last year, and he's going to do big things uh, when he gets to a new team. He is 30 years old, but don't worry about that. Don't worry about his age. He's a great cornerback. He can stop the run. Which he's a great tackler, and that's great to see by, by, by any cornerback, by any person in this league, you have to tackle. Carlos Rogers can do that. All right, my number seven is Marcus Close, and the reason why he's so low is because I don't trust him. I mean, I think the only reason he was so good was because of Drew Brees, but we're going to see what he can do. Maybe he can prove me wrong. Maybe Marcus Close is going to come out and have a great year. We'll have to see about that, but my number six is Matt Flynn. Matt Flynn becoming a free agent. He was playing for the Green Bay Packers. The reason he didn't get playing time, obviously, was because Aaron Rodgers was at the helm, but you know what? Matt Flynn is still a great uh, quarterback. I want to see what he can do. Well, I want to say great quarterback, but he looks like a pretty decent talent. I want to see what he can do when it comes to free agent, what team is going to go to. Maybe Cleveland, maybe Miami if they don't get paid Manning. But if a team doesn't get paid Manning, uh, Matt Flynn is where um, they're going to go. So, Kuda, what is your 10 through 6? All right, number 10, I got Reggie Wayne. And pro people are probably saying that he's too old and he doesn't have that much left in him. Take away the age. He's still a very quality wide receiver. He can still make those big plays. He's a deep threat that you need for your team. A lot of speculation that he might reunite with Peyton Manning in Miami. But who knows? Maybe Peyton Manning may not go to Miami or he could go to Arizona. But a team should definitely look at Reggie Wayne, try and pick him up. And that's why it's number 10. Number 9 is Peyton Hillis. Take away all the injury bullshit with the whole man curse. And Peyton Hillis, he's still got a quality running back who can get those yards in between the tackle. He can truck the hell out of the defenders. He's very... He's very quality running back, and he's probably the best running back in the free you can see right now, other than Michael Bush. So I say go after Peyton Hillis. Oh, wait, did I say Peyton Manning? Oh, I meant Peyton Hillis. My bad, all right? Um, he, he's not going to go back to Cleveland, obviously, but I would take a look at Peyton Hillis, all right? Number eight, we got Steven Tulluck, probably um, the second best linebacker in the free agency. He had 100 solo tackles. This season with the Detroit Lions, probably because the Lions defense can't tackle anybody for shape. With Steven Tulluck making all those big plays, at two interceptions, and you got a decent linebacker. So I'll look at, at Steven Tulluck. At number seven, we got Corwin Finnegan, um, one of the best cornerbacks we have in this year's NFL free agency. He's not going back to the Titans because he wants too much money from the Titans. I mean, ten million dollars must be the highest paid cornerback in the NFL. I don't think the Titans are going to agree with that. So, Corwin Finnegan is going to take his talents elsewhere. He's still a great, he's still a great player, very aggressive. He gets past deflections and he can get inside your mind. So, I I say Corwin Finnegan is number seven. Number six, I got Tracy Porter with the whole Saint Bounty bullshit that's going on. I still respect Tracy Porter, and you still got a great quarterback in Tracy Porter, probably. Um, he could be the best cornerback. You still got Brandon Carr, but uh, I say Tracy Porter is like the top three. So I would go after Tracy Porter as well. All right, my number five is none other than Quellen Finnegan. You already talked about him. He's aggressive. He uh, deflects passes. He's a little bit short, but this man is nasty. He'll he, he'll hit you as soon as that snap passes. Uh, whereas as soon as that snap goes, Corlin Finnegan, very aggressive, one of the best cornerbacks in the league. He wants to get paid, and this man will get paid. All right, so we have Brandon Carr, my number four. I do have him above Corlin Finnegan. I do like him overall uh, more than Corlin Finnegan. He is a little bit taller than Corlin Finnegan, which also helps. Brandon Carr is a big-time player. He's going get, get, gonna to get paid a whole lot of money. Hopefully he comes to the Titans because we need a hole after Corlin Finnegan left. But anyway, Brandon Carr, big-time cornerback, and he's going to get paid. Number three, I have Vincent Jackson. Oh, my God, what an athlete. Vincent Jackson, 6'5", such a deep threat when it comes to the Chargers. There's a reason why Phillip Rivers gets all these yards every year. It's because of this man, Vincent Jackson, going down the field and catching these balls in the red zone. 
uh, Vincent Jackson, big time receiver. He's going to get paid a lot of money. We're going to see where he goes. My number two, I have Carl Nix. Uh, Carl Nix, big time guard. Um, when it comes to the, it just, yeah, just a big time guard. I mean, he opens up holes for Darren Sproles and is a great pass. Um, he, he helps, he's a great pass blocker when it comes to, you know, blocking, you know, you know what I'm talking about. He, he, he protects, you know, he protects Drew Brees though. All right, this man is a big time guard and I can't wait to see where Carl Nix goes and he's going to make a big time impact, I guarantee you. And my number one is Mario Williams who wants to be paid as the best defensive player ever. In NFL history, we're going to have to see where he goes, though. Mario Williams, big time, big time defensive end. All right, so at number five, I got Marcus Colston. Um, like you said earlier, you don't trust Marcus Colston without your base, but I still think that Marcus Colston, he can be a valuable wide receiver who can be that deep threat attack, and he can get those yards. So I say Marcus Colston is number five on my list. Number four, I got Carl Nix. Without a doubt, one of the best guards in the NFL and probably the best offensive lineman in the NFL. You always need that one guy who can protect the quarterback and the running back all the time. We're trying to protect both the rush and pass, and Carl Nix can do both of them. He can always spread a hole open for either Darren Sproles, Mark Ingram, Pierre Thomas, who are the fuck the starting um, running back for the Saints is. He can always be that pass protection for Drew Brees. No, no reason why Drew Brees got past 5,000 passing yards. Because he has a guy like Carl Nix who protects him all the time. That's why he's number four. Number three, I got Mario Williams without that one of the best defensive players in the NFL. The centerpiece of the Houston, Texas defense is pretty retarded how the Texans are, are letting him go. They drafted him first overall. He's been, without a doubt, worthy of being drafted first overall. And all the respect goes to Mar Mario Williams for carrying the Texans defense all these damn years. And now he has to go to another team and carry that defense. So... I look out for Marlon Williams. Number two, I got Vincent Jackson, six foot five. This guy is tall. He's fast. He knows how to catch the ball, and he's probably he's probably why Phil Rivers has got these yards because he always has a deep threat in Vincent Jackson, aka Action Jackson. I mean, this guy, you can always rely on him to make big plays. In all of his experience in the NFL, he's passed up the thousand receiving yard three times, and you know this guy is just outstanding. A lot of speculation that it's going to Chicago. And Chicago, they need that deep threat because they can't just rely on Johnny Knox. So I would go after Vincent Jackson. And at number one, I got none other than the underrated Matt Flynn. People only overshadow him just because he had that big game against the Detroit Lions and how the Lions have a terrible defense. Well, take, take away from that, Matt Flynn, he really never got his time to shine. I mean, you got Aaron Rodgers, a monster QB. Like, you really expect the Packers to start Matt Flynn? Or Aaron Rodgers. I would go with Aaron Rodgers, but it's time for Matt Flynn to separate from the Packers. It's time for Matt Flynn to make a name for himself. This guy came out of LSU as a very underrated QB, who was the MVP of the Sugar Bowl, I believe it was. And this guy, he needs his chance to shine. So, a team, any team in the NFL needs to go for Matt Flynn, and that's it. All right, thank you, Kuda, for your time. Alright, so that was Kuda Charamba giving his top 10 free agents, and I just want to talk about, you know, the big story, the big free agent, Peyton Manning. Um, where is he going to end up? There are now reports that the Cardinals and the Broncos are now front runners. I mean, after, I mean you know about the Broncos. I mean, if, if Peyton Manning goes to the Broncos, Tim Tebow is out of there. Because the Broncos know that they can shop Tim Tebow, they can get someone good uh, with Tim Tebow. And, you know, that'll be interesting to see where Peyton Manning goes. Ultimately, I think he's going to end up in Arizona, though. I mean, I hear that him and Reggie Wayne are a package deal. So if he goes there and Reggie Wayne goes there, you have Fitzgerald on the right and Reggie Wayne on the left. This team is a Super Bowl offense. And the defense, in my opinion, is good enough to get there to um, the, the Super Bowl. I mean, I don't think this defense is going to let up even 40 points. Maybe even not even 30 points. I think they're that good. Maybe 30 points. Maybe they only give up 30 points maybe twice during the whole... Uh, you know, they, they didn't even give up 30 points this whole season, pretty much the Arizona Cardinals did. So they already have a good defense in place led by Patrick Peterson and Kalias Campbell. Um, you know, Patrick Peterson coming in, he was a rookie last year. He played great for them. A lot of people thought he should have been rookie of the year, but I don't know if I'd go that far. Um, but, you know, as and the defense will continue to grow. The Cardinals will continue to get better. 
So it was, I have to, you know, I have to, I'm, I have to say, man, Peyton Manning, you should go to the Arizona Cardinals. That's where I go if I were you. So anyway, guys, uh, just comment down with your thoughts on your top five, top two, five, top three, top one, whatever you want to talk about. Your free agents. Give me your thoughts where this free agents would go. Um, and you know, I just want to hear what y'all guys think. Tell me where you think Peyton Manning will end up. I may make another separate video about that. But you guys better expect videos from me all week because you better watch your ESPN tickers. There will be breaking news all woo all week long. There will be breaking news. Wait your ESPN tickers because that's just gonna be going up. Do -do 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 -do. All right, all fucking week. All right, anyway, guys, James Carter TV. I'll be covering NFL free agency and the NBA trade deadline that's coming up on March 15th. Remember, free agency starts Tuesday at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Let March Madness begin.